do I need treatment for internet addiction? So I hope we have a little bit of fun with this and I really want you guys and girls to take a look as you go through this at yourself, kind of how you see things and is this what I'm about to talk about, internet addiction, is it really about addiction or is it more about emotional health? And let me start with a story. So several years ago, I was on my way to a wedding. I was with uh, the groom and his part of the wedding party and the question came up because they know I'm a therapist and I had been doing couples therapy for a long time and they said, hey, what is the, the biggest issue that you run into, um, you know, that that's, couples argue about what's the biggest thing and I said oh that one's super easy it's the internet so let me explain um, there's variations to this uh, complaint it's not about the internet itself it's my spouse or my significant other spends too much time on the internet using the computer so whether it's gaming whether it's you know social media with friends whether it's internet porn the li list just goes on and so regardless of the specifics the theme is all the same uh, and it becomes just this big uh, point of contention within relationships. So let's take a closer look at how the problem develops and what you can do about it. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Jerry Grosso. I'm the clinical director of Insight Psychology and Addiction in Newport Beach, California. And I have spent my career, I mean, I, I started seeing clients, I think my first internship was 1991, so that can kind of tell you how long I've been around for. Uh, and I have pretty much worked just a ton of hours a day, working with people, trying to help them improve their life. I've worked in psychiatric hospitals, I've worked in residential treatment centers, I've worked in private practice, a lot of different areas, so uh, seeing a lot of different issues. So what I'm trying to do with these videos is bringing all the information, like everything you can't learn in a psychology class or you technically don't learn, but it's more real, real wor world. So I'm going to try to help you guys better understand things that have to do with mental illness, uh, destigmatize it. It's not a bad thing. We all struggle with issues. I am no different. The only difference is, is I've had a lot of practice both personally, meaning like working through my own issues as well as a professional helping other people work through theirs so they can get to emotional health. So let's go back to our, our thing and use of the internet and why is it such a big problem um, in relationships? And, and a thing we need to look at is, is why do, if it's such a problem like if my wife and I argue about it all the time why is it that I feel compelled to keep going back to it so in an effort to keep things easy and understandable I always want to make sure that I make myself familiar with information that you guys have accessible which is essentially on the internet you guys can go do an inter uh, a search about pretty much any topic and you know in the medical field you know people say oh you go play dr. Google and you kind of look up all your symptoms and stuff so you guys will have no problem at all going to find information on on what I'm talking about okay so um, there is a lot of information out there uh, when it comes to let's say internet addiction and again I'm gonna swing this more towards emotional health but it surrounds the the talk of neurotransmitters so let's let's look at a couple of things okay um, let's look at what first things the factors that if something was truly an addiction things that would need to be present what are neurotransmitters and what what effect do they have on us um, how the content on the internet and the way it's structured keeps us coming back to it and then finally we'll look at how do you take um, take back control so let's first start with a couple of things that have more to do with addiction and it's again this is information that you uh, have available to you so the more information you have the easier it is to grow and you hear me say that a lot like the whole goal here with emotional health is um, is to uh, continue growing that's what makes you healthy so here's a couple of criteria that need to be present when you to quantify something you know as an addiction it's a little bit more difficult when it comes to behavior but let me talk about these two things one is tolerance so when it comes to tolerance um, do I need higher amounts of whatever it is that I'm doing to obtain the same effect which essentially would it mean that if I'm using the internet I need more and more and more use of it in order just to get the same feeling I used to get with less time. The second thing is withdrawal symptoms. Are there physiological symptoms that occur, um, you know, let's say in my behavior if I'm not engaged in it? Now, again, it's easier to quantify, let's say, with substances, maybe not so easy with behaviors, but you could look at it if I don't go to the internet, if I'm not checking social media, if I'm not 
doing whatever it is I do on it, do I find myself getting irritable and agitated? Um, do I find myself getting depressed? So, again, to call something an addiction, you, you kind of need to look at tolerance and withdrawal. But I, I, again, I want to make it clear that you're going to see that this is much more about emotional health than addiction. So, um, let's talk about. Uh, uh, neurotransmitters okay I want you to better understand that so I'm really gonna simplify it again if you guys want to go get more information in detail you, you can go do your own research but neurotransmitters are essentially chemicals in your brain that send information between brain cells and I don't think you can see my drawing here so let's just use my hands okay here's a brain cell here's a brain cell and they will um, shoot substances let's say we could say pretend they look like tennis balls in between these two cells and that's how they communicate with each other so um, they do, the neurotransmitters play a huge role in how we feel, how we think, motivation, you know, like in what we do. And they also help us with desire, they help us with planning, and they help us with, with focus. So what I noticed when I was doing research on this, that a lot of the neurotransmitters, or some of them specifically, they refer to as a pleasure chemical. And they're saying that the release of that neurotransmitter in between the two brain cells can give you feelings of euphoria, bliss, and enhanced motivation. And then they will quickly summarize that this is why um, people feel so compelled to keep going back to the internet or social media or online porn, things like that, uh, video games, because in, in, in what they have found, uh, and so anyway, so they simplify it and, and say that, oh, it's because the activation of the specific neurotransmitter, it's the pleasure chemical, and that's what makes you want to do it. I'm going to take this a little bit further than that and add um, some information that is not included when people are simplifying it that much. So I'm not saying that's not true. I'm just saying I'm going to give you a little bit more information. You guys can kind of do what you want with it. So researchers have found through the advanced imaging techniques that addictive drugs cause the activation of specific circuits in the brain and they're in the brain reward system. And it is believed that um, your brain remembers that and it wants to continue to come back to those pleasures and rewards. Now, the neurotransmitters, as previously said, are thought to be the center of that process. And again, the conclusion is that that you engage in the behavior, the neurotransmitters come in, there's a pleasure, that's the reward, and that's what compels you to go um, back to it. Now, an interesting thing, if you talk to people that, are, that struggle with long-term addiction, they state they receive very little joy from the use of whatever it is that they're doing or whatever behavior they're engaging in, but they still feel compelled to, to continue. So that made me kind of think about, okay, so if there's really not pleasure coming with it, and the behavior still happens, is the reward something different? It's, it's not necessarily pleasure. So this is where it gets a little um, interesting. So instead of blaming addiction and let's looking at mental health issues, you know, here's what some researchers noticed when working with war veterans, especially those that experienced trauma. They found that when they were reminded of specific sounds of combat or certain situations that triggered pretty much their PTSD symptoms, like intrusive thoughts and you know flashbacks, that neurotransmitters also surged in their brains. So here, here's the thing. They had uh, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, they had symptoms that were you know, extremely painful, whether it was flashbacks of what happened, it could be nightmares, um, it was just kind of feeling like they were back in the same situation, so these were more startling, they were shocking, they didn't feel good at all. So then the question is, how could the neurotransmitter actually be a pleasure chemical if it's if its release is leading to a feeling that's unpleasant. So what I'm going to state here, could it be that the neurotransmitters that are being released are more of an activating chemical instead of a pleasure chemical? So that's the, let's move on to the next part. So what we can say is we can engage in a behavior, we can have a specific thought, um, we could be compelled to do something and certain neurotransmitters are released in our brain, okay? But now I'm gonna take you back to the 1960s. There was a famous psychologist back then, he worked at Harvard, his name was B.F. Skinner, and he was responsible for a lot of useful information and research in psychology and how human um, behavior was dependent on previous actions. So. Could it be, so if we're looking at some of his information, could it be that internet use and overuse or internet addiction is really the effect of what he studied and referred to was variable ratio reinforcement schedule? So um, 
again, when you look at, well, first you're going to ask me, what's a variable racial reinforcement schedule? And um, even if I knew that, how's that going to fix my, my relationship? So uh, I'm, I'm going to explain it like this. Think about gambling. Think about lottery tickets. Think about all the stuff in Las Vegas. Even fishing, okay? What B.F. Skinner found was that behavior is reinforced um, when you get a certain response of, well, let me put it a little bit different. When the response you get is with the outcomes are unpredictable. So he might use a rat and he would say, hey rat, if you push down this lever, you're gonna get some food. So the rat pushes the lever, he gets food, and then the next time the rat pushes the lever, it doesn't work, and so the rat thinks, well, I don't know if this works or not, so he'll go push it again. And maybe some food comes out next time, maybe it doesn't. And so what they found was, is the rats would continue to go push the lever. And they would push it more frequently than the ones that knew they were gonna get food every time. And they would do it much more frequently than the ones that knew they weren't getting anything from. So if you think about like a slot machine, sometimes they pay, sometimes they don't, but people sit in front of them and they continue to put money into them. Okay, so taking that a little bit further, what, what he also found was getting rid of those behaviors were extremely difficult. So if they had a rat that learned, okay, to push to get food and then it always got food and then it never got food, he would just stop pushing it. But the ones that it was intermittent, it took them a very long time to stop pushing the lever. So trying to simplify what it is that I'm saying, if, you, if the outcome is unpredictable, the behavior is a lot stronger. You'll continue to do things more and more. So now let's kind of look at it when we're talking about the internet. So you're saying, well, how does that, that have to do with the internet? When you go on to the um, internet, your outcomes can be very different. So it brings about pretty much unpredictable outcomes. No different than what we were just talking about. You could get good news, you know, maybe through a social media, is, hey, you, one of your friends just got married or engaged, or you know, you could see something that's inspiring, you could see something that you really enjoyed, you could see the weather and you're going on vacation, you're like, oh, the weather's gonna be great. Um, but at the same time, you could also get bad news. You could read about a couple that you knew that broke up, you could see that the economy is in a recession. You could see the vacation place that you wanted to book is already booked. So when you look at every time you go on the internet or use the computer or you're playing a game, you might lose, you know, um, as opposed to win, but it compels you over and over. Because the outcome is unpredict unpredictable, it compels you to come back for more. So really, when um, we look at it, and I hope you guys understand, the, the internet is extremely useful. And I'm not saying not to use it. What I'm saying is, is that it will always draw you back, okay? So the question is, if it's, if it's set up like, because the outcomes are unpredictable, because it activates neurotransmitters in my brain, and it compels me to come back, um, what am I supposed to do, right? So what we really want to look at is how do I control the engagement in these activities and doing stuff that promotes emotional health versus promotes promoting stuff that's destructive. So remember neurotransmitters in your brain are not only released by using the computer. Um, they can be released by reading, it could be physical exercise, it could be an emotional connection with someone else, it could be interacting uh, with friends and so forth. So my point is I got to start to look at if I'm in control or is something else in control. And, I, and I've got to pick what it is that I want to do with this and see if I can make changes within my life. So if I know in, in fact that the way the internet is created, the, the way content is created, and again, it could be gaming, it could be movies and shows, it could be um, specific topics I'm interested in, it could be internet porn, it could be any of these things that when I, do, when I go, the unpredictable outcomes whether they're good or bad, it's gonna activate neurotransmitters in my brain, which is activating my brain actually making it feel pretty good, I'm gonna be compelled to go back. So I wanna to start to make a conscious choice. How do I use this to my benefit and not to my detriment? Think about it like this. And this is really, you know, um, 
the difference between, and I'm going to say I struggled with this, meaning what I'm about to say, no different than anyone else. Do I engage in stuff that's self-destructive or do I engage in self-development? And I have to think about that. So if my brain, if I'm kind of just feeling I need to be compelled to do something, which is normal, I, I can look at it in a couple ways. Do I want to get the activation of the neurotransmitters from interaction, let's say, with my wife or with my family or with my friends? Do I want to get that dose of activation from learning and growing or do I want to go get that activation by engaging in a mindless task. So I'm not saying that it's bad and that you can't use it to go check it out uh, or to go, like sometimes I just want my brain to check out. I'm getting, I'm watching a movie, I'm kind of checked out, but my brain feels activated. So let's kind of sum this back up and we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, First of all, I'm Dr. Jerry Grosso from Inside Psychology and Addiction in Newport Beach, California. If you guys like this video, please feel free to share it with other people. If you don't like it, um, well, first of all, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down.